Hey guys, Rob's back again here with uh, Precision Raceworks. And uh, if you watched our earlier video, we went over our M54 ignition kit and kind of the different components that come with that kit and everything. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go over how to install everything in the car and what all's involved. Uh, so that you kind of get a little bit of a step-by-step how-to on what to do. And you might catch a trick or tip somewhere along the way in this video. So let's dig in and get started on this. First thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the uh, bolts that are securing the valve cover on the car. These are going to be five millimeter bolts. Um, this particular car only has uh, two bolts in the front. Most cars these days, either from years and years of service, only have two bolts left in them, um, or just because it's a lot easier to do the work. So you may find that you get an additional bolt here, an additional bolt here as well. Be mindful of this bolt here in the back. A lot of people drop them. That's the reason I'd say probably 90% of the cars out there don't even have that bolt anymore. So once you get the bolts out, it's pretty simple to get off. Uh, this car, he's got a modified air box on, so it fits a little bit tighter and everything, but it still lifts right up. So you'll take that uh, cover off, you'll set it out of the way. Now we're down to the ignition coils. Most people have gotten to this step. The coils, factory coils are really easy to remove. You simply lift up here on the, the levers, and you do this for each and every one of them. I like just doing things in a sequential order. I pull each one of them up, I unplug each one of them, and then once they're all unplugged, you'll just take your finger, stick it through the hole, and you'll pull each one of the coils up out of the uh, holes. So we'll just move along through these last three coils real quick, and we'll move on to the next stage. Um, normally, anytime you change the coils on a car, we recommend changing the spark plugs. This customer that brought us a car told us he had just changed his plugs. So for this car today, we won't be changing those. He also had just uh, put dielectric grease um, on the plugs, so we're not going to show putting that on, but it's always recommended stock ignition or aftermarket. Always use a little bit of dielectric grease. Um, so the next step here, once we get all the coils out, so we're going to start removing this uh, wiring tray here. So to do that, we'll take two 10 millimeter uh, bolts out. This back one here can't quite reach. He's got an M3 strut bar on his car uh, for a little extra chassis stability. So we'll just do that one with a hand wrench here. Always be careful not to drop bolts. Uh, it's a lot of work to go chase them down later on. All right, so now we got both bolts out. The wiring tray should be loose. You're gonna come across here and start by removing the wiring that's just clipped in the top here, you want to remove each one of those. Here you've got a uh, capacitor that's built right into the system from uh, BMW. This is something that um, some other coils, uh, Okada and stuff, try to sit there and claim that theirs puts out more powers and they sell you upgraded harness. Really all their upgraded harness is is a harness with a capacitor in it. Guess what? BMW already does that. So save yourself a little bit of money. Um, you've already got what you need built into the car from the factory. So you'll keep removing this. Here you're going to find that there's going to be two zip ties securing this um, to this other portion. We got everything else out. So let me step away. I'm going to grab a pair of cutters real quick. We'll be right back and we'll cut those zip ties. You just cut the plastic zip ties on both sides. All right, so now that you got both the zip ties cut, your wiring on the top here should be nice and loose and free. You've got a rubber grommet that's here with a plastic clip. This plastic clip has a latch mechanism on each side of it that snaps over it like this. So it's facing this way and it snaps in. So the way we do that is we take a flathead screwdriver, we put it just underneath it, we pry out just a little bit, and then that clip just pops right off. Once that clip is off, this rubber grommet here is free to move up. So now we got the majority of the harness is removed. We're left with this tray here that has uh, your boost actuators and some other stuff on them, or boost solenoids on it and other things. So uh, let's go ahead and get to removing the rest of this tray here. All right, so the next step, once you get this wiring here loose off of the tray, and so you can see that it's separated here, we got two separate pieces, is to start working on getting the wire that's in this tray out of the tray. So where we're gonna start, as you can see on the top here, we've got a clip, another clip, and it's the same on both sides all the way down. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna unplug these connectors here. What that does is that'll give us just a little bit more room to be able to pull up on this. 
can feed them back around underneath the vacuum tubes. Now we can flip it over and actually see the other side of this and see that connector I'm talking about. So, and slide our screwdriver underneath, pry it up a little bit, work it up and over. That first one's normally the hardest. The ones after that have a tendency to go a little bit quicker and a little bit easier. So we'll work our way down the line, just prying each one of those up, and you can see the cover starting to come off. So we're going to swap back over and start working on the other side again, and just keep working our way uh, down through here gradually. It's a little harder to do on film. Got to try to stay out of the camera's way. This here is the single hardest part of the whole install. So once you've gotten this far, everything just keeps moving right along. All right, so now that we've got the upper wiring assembly removed and we've got the cover off this tray here, we're going to start popping out all the factory loom, pulling the rubber grommets out. We got one more in the back here that'll also just lift up and out. We got all the wires now out except for this little front section. Now this front section is the only part that's got any plastic clips or anything. And to do those we simply just slide a screwdriver in between. We give it a little twist and it'll start popping up. We got one side up. Now we move across and go over to the other side. Now with this last piece of plastic removed, we'll set that over to the side. Pop these last three pieces of loom out. And now this tray is ready to slide out of here. All right, so now all the prep work is done for installing the new ignition system. So let's work on actually putting the ignition system in. So our next step, we're going to take the Precision Raceworks ignition wires. Now remember, he already installed, uh, put dielectric grease on these plugs whenever he did maintenance uh, here recently. So we're going to just go ahead and slide them out. You want to make sure that you fill them click in place. Um, I like to hold on to the, the blue wire here and push on top as I push down and I just push firmly and, and wait to fill it click. You don't need a lot of force for these, just I'll try to be quiet and let you hear it click. So I don't know if you can hear that, um, but this is a nice little firm click that you get on here or you can fill it biting on there and you just do that for each one of these plug wires. All right, so we got four of the plug wires in. We're just going to install these last two. We fill around just a little bit as we push it in push down, we get a nice firm engagement there. Cylinder 6 is a little bit more work, especially with the M3 strut bar. It sits a little tighter up against things down in here, but it slips in behind there. So once we've got the plug wires in, the next thing to do is to install the actual row of coils themselves. So to do that, we'll grab the two connectors from down here to give us a little bit more room. We'll lift all the wiring up and we'll start feeding uh, all of this up underneath. So we'll take slide the coils back in up under here. You get caught on wires, just kind of take your time feeding it through. Slide it the rest of the way in. And we're going to slide until these two bolts that we had originally are able to be seen through the slotted holes and we can see those now. So now we'll just kind of start tidying things up on this up, upper side for how we're going to end up wanting it. So the way I like to do that is I like to pull all my spark plug wires over to where they're on the front. Let me kind of pull this over so you can see and all the factory wiring is on the back. And we do that for all six of them. They're all there. Now what we can do is we can go ahead and secure this bracket. Uh, for that, you'll use the original two bolts that were removed from the car. You start with the front one first. And just line it up until you can see it. Be careful not to drop the bolt. And get it in the hole and get it hand tight to start. It's a little bit of a tight fit here, but it's not bad. Just take your time. And it's not down all the way by any means, but it's not about to come off. All right, so we're going to go ahead and remove this little section of cowl that he's got on here and everything. We removed this screw uh, earlier today. Oh, he's going to slap the cowl on there. But we got the cowl off. That gives us that little bit of extra room. We can try to put this bolt in here now. 
we can go ahead and start connecting some of the wires here. So let's put each one of these spark plug wires on first and then we'll just start tidying things up and connecting the last few bits and pieces. Now we're left with the factory wiring here and down here, but we need to get these to plug in because we don't have those plugged in. So for that we grab the uh, six coil adapter harnesses that we've got. I set those over here out to the side and we just work our way through installing those as well. So just start with one cylinder, push it. Sometimes they're a little bit tight, just kind of give it a little bit of a wiggle and it'll snap on there. All right, that one's locked in. All right, so now that we've got those attached, we do basically the same thing, but with the factory uh, harness. So for that, you take and look, your flats need to line up. Um, you can't plug this in wrong, it's keyed, so don't worry about that, but just make sure that you use cylinder one to cylinder one and so forth, and just work your way down through all the connections. Oh, something I didn't mention is I like to keep these wires up underneath the factory wiring just because it's tidier. Um, I'm going to go back and redo cylinder number two so that it's like that. And to do that, we'll just loosen this clip here and we'll pull the two apart. Now it's out. We're going to take it and run it back up underneath the factory wiring there and then plug the two back together. Be mindful not to mix these cylinders up or you will have misfires and rough idles and everything else until you get the firing sequence back uh, correctly plugged in. All right, so now with everything connected here, um, the physical working portion of this is all connected. You'd still tighten your bolts down and everything. Everything else after this is just purely cosmetic. Um, we'll kind of just step away and, and kind of just show you an overview of how we take care of that and get everything uh, reconnected. Make sure that you also remember that you unplug these earlier and get those routed back underneath to the solenoids and uh, plug back in. As far as dealing with the wires here, there's a couple different ways of uh, taking care of that. So we provide each kit with uh, some loom tubing, split loom tubing for tidying up the wiring. Um, some people like that. I personally, uh, I find it to look just as good as the factory did. These wires were already exposed from the factory and just kind of grouped together. They're still even taped like they were from the factory. I like to unplug just the coil wires and I tuck the factory wiring behind it. And I pop my spark plug wires back onto the coil, making sure they click in place. And I just kind of do this working from the front to the back. What this does, this keeps all the factory wires away from uh, the fuel lines here, these high pressure fuel lines can get really hot. Um, so I do that because it keeps all the wires away from them and it still gives a nice, you know, tidy look to everything. So keep working your way down these things, popping them off and moving to the next one and so forth. What we're doing now is strictly cosmetic. People can spend as little or as much time as they want on wiring harnesses on a car. People do wire tucks and everything else to hide wires. Um, but all of this is strictly cosmetic, and that's it. So now this is all sitting down out of the way. The only other wires we haven't addressed are these wires down here. So for these wires here, uh, I like to use loom on them. We've got clips down here to secure it. Some people we've seen that have installed our kits have just put the clips over the wires and let them be held in place. Either is perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong um, with, with doing either approach. But me personally, I like to pull these wires up and out and give me a little bit of room to work on them and I'll grab a little bit of the split loom uh, to slide over it. Alright so for looming this portion here you take your loom you lay it out the distance that you want and you simply cut your loom and then once you got it the length that you want you just start feeding it over find the split and get it started over the wiring 
like so. And then you just kind of work it down over the wiring and you could slide it on the wiring as well. I like to get it started like that. I get it past that first zip tie and then I'll grab a little bit of electrical tape. You can use uh, small zip ties on it as well. Some people prefer that. Um, OEM uses electrical tape over their loom. I typically use uh, OEM tape, or excuse me, electrical tape over my loom as well. Uh, you don't need to use really expensive stuff for this. However, I do always recommend anytime you're doing electrical tape over actual wiring, always make sure you use 3M electrical tape, not any of the cheap stuff for that. So for loom, cheap stuff's fine. So you get it started and you slide it down and you just kind of keep working the loom over it. Once you've got it that far, come right before the wiring and put a wrap of electrical tape right around that as well. All right, so we got that much of it done. Now we're gonna put two more pieces of electrical tape around that. One of the pieces is gonna go right after those wires and the other piece is gonna go right at the end of that split loom. Got one there. All right, let's put that last piece of electric electrical tape over here around that loom. Pull it down, tight it, push it in there. All right, so now with that loom on there, we're going to take those connectors, tuck them back up underneath the vacuum lines like they were. Your long one goes to the solenoid in the front, your short one goes to the solenoid in the rear. So let's get the long one fed under, let's feed the short one under. Alright, so this is a good time if we'd like to go ahead and tighten that front bolt. So now it's time to tighten those bolts back up. So we're going to start with the front bolt, and lift up just a little bit to get your clearance so you can get on it. Tighten it down nice and snug. Um, if you've got the OEM bolts, you may have the torque style. Those are aluminum. If you have the aluminum bolts, be a little bit careful whenever you're tightening them. Um, aluminum bolts do break easily. So we start clipping the loom in place. Once we get that done, we get the front clip done. Now the rear clip is done. And so we got the front section of wiring done here. Now we can repeat the, the same for the rear if you like and just simply slide it over. Um, to do that, it's easier if you grab behind here and try to pull it up and over the coils for the moment. It does tuck nice and tight behind here, as you can see. So let me see if I can get that out around that coil. All right, so now we got that wiring up on the top and it's just a little easier to see here. I measured off the length, take a pair of cutters and just simply cut the loom in half. All right, so with the loom cut to the appropriate length, find a section that's fairly easy to get to. Get the loom started over it. I'm going to stick this tape right here for now. Get it started over it. Get it to a section that you can uh, get tape on it nice and easily. We're going to feed it on here. Alright, so now we got the loom all the way from here, all the way around the back of the motor, and back to the factory loom. And now we're going to click this last clip over that. So now we can see that we got all of the factory wiring here, all loomed up, held in place, nice and tight in the same location it was originally from the factory. Now, if you prefer, it's all preference on wiring and, and tidiness, um, but we do provide extra loom here that's for these other wires that, run, that we ran underneath. You can sit there and take the time and run loom uh, with all of those just like we did here. There's no difference. You just take your time and work it. Um, and tape it and keep moving through it. And you can run it and it'll fit nice and tidy behind here just like we did the wiring. Uh, but for this install, it's, there's really nothing wrong with doing any of this and we like the way it looks. It has a nice clean look to it. So all that's left now is to uh, put the cover back on and fire this baby up. All right, so if you're wanting to use the factory cover, um, now that we've added these new upgraded wires, uh, they stick up a little bit higher, the coils stick up a little bit higher. And so 
that requires a little bit of trimming of the foam, but the cover will still go back on. So I just take these as a guide and I trim just to the one side. Just take a nice, sharp, clean razor blade and just slice right through that foam all the way down. Uh, you don't need to get, I'll kind of change this so the camera can see. I cut right across here. I don't want to remove this. There's no reason to, but you're going to remove all the foam from this side. So I take my finger and just kind of slide it underneath and see if there's anywhere left that I didn't quite get. If there's somewhere like here that I didn't quite get, I come back with a razor blade and just slide it through there and make sure I got it. Do that working your way all the way down until you've got all of it cut free. Now, this is the side, as you see, that has the coils. And so we just start lifting the foam and pulling it up out of here. So there's just little clips that hold it. Oops. And so we just take that, grab and pull. All right, so now that we got that foam out of there, nice, clean, trimmed look, it's time to start sliding this baby back in here. All right, so you slide it. You can see it sits right back down, oil cap sticking up. Look at the front for your bolt holes. I see bolt hole one lining up. I see bolt hole two lining up. So we got those front ones on. Uh, you can leave the rear ones out. Like we were saying earlier, this customer already had theirs out. Um, or you can install this one here. This uh, far back rear one will not fit because of the way the coils sit and everything like that. But it's not an issue. If anything, it makes it easier. So that's it guys. What we got here is a fully upgraded M54 coil system using Precision Race Works ignition coils. You can see the cover still goes back on. It looks like we haven't done anything to this car, but in reality, we've added probably 20 plus wheel horsepower to this car. It'll idle smoother. It'll have better throttle response. The only thing that's left to do is uh, if this is a car that's pushing over 550, 600 wheel horsepower, then we recommend flashing it so you can take full advantage of these coils. For cars that are below 550 to 600 wheel horsepower, there's really no reason to even flash the car. Drive it like it is. You're still going to get more output out of the coils. You're not going to see additional horsepower gains. We've proven on the dyno that you're going to get all the gains at 550 to 600 wheel horsepower without flashing that there's no reason to even flash. All you're doing whenever you flash at that point is you're just putting more wear and tear on the coils, more wear and tear on your spark plugs, and more wear and tear on other electronic components within the car. So there's no reason to do that if you're not going to benefit. But that's it. Let's get over and uh, work on getting this flash done real quick. We'll take this thing out.